Hello, Chris Betcher here, and I'm doing this screencast to tell you a little bit about this thing here. This is called a Pico board. Uh, I recently did a presentation for the K12 online conference called uh, Teaching Your Kids to Think Using Scratch. And towards the end of it, I mentioned that there's this wonderful thing called a Pico board. But I didn't have time to explain it, so I'm, I'd like to just give you a little look now at what they actually do. Um, and I'd like to just give a hat tip to Martin Levins, a friend of mine here in Australia who, uh, who originally put me onto these things. And I think Martin had told me about these a couple of times and I just it kind of washed over me until he lent me one and I took it home and I had a play and it's like, wow, these are really neat things. So we bought a few for school. Um, they are, as I say, called Pico Boards. Um, Pico, uh, the company that makes them is the Playful Innovation Company, P-I-C-O. So uh, that's where they get their name. And they're made in Montreal in Canada. Uh, they cost 50 US dollars and we ordered a bunch of them um, and they shipped them out to Australia. So it appears that they will send them anywhere in the world. So if you're into scratch, um, these are really neat. Let me show you what they do. Um, well, before I do that, just so what, what this board is, is uh, it's just a little piece of circuit board and it has a slider, as you can see there, uh, which I imagine just varies voltage. Um, through some sort of resistance um, thing. I'm not r really into electronics, but so I think it's a voltage changer. Uh, there's a button, an on-off button. There's a microphone, so it can listen for sound. And there's a light sensor, so it can also monitor the ambient light um, around it. There is also four little plugs here. Um, you also get these uh, cables. Let me just grab one of them. So what this cable is, is uh, it's a little, um, two and a half mil uh, mini jack connector on one end and on the other end it goes to a um, couple of alligator clips which are obviously the positive and the negative sides of this uh, this plug here. And they just clip in like so, like that. And so now you can start to take voltage readings into the Pico board and do stuff with it. Now, the reason I'm telling you about this is because Scratch is a wonderful program, and um, it's I, I did the whole workshop on it in the K12 online, so if you didn't see that, you might like to go back and have a look at it. But Scratch comes from MIT, there you go, MIT, and um, it's, it's a way of, it's a programming language for kids. Now, it's great, but a programming language operates within the computer. What the Pico boards let you do is start to take the instructions that you're writing and start to interface them with the real world. So let me give you a couple of really simple examples. <clears throat> so we've got Scratch open here, and I'm just going to write a really simple program. So I'm going to take this, this forever loop and put it up there. And let's go into the motion section here, and we're going to say we're going to set the X value to zero. Now, just a quick recap, the X value relates to the to the yeah, horizontal position across the screen. So zero in the middle, positive values this way, negative values that way. So if I was to run this little program, set X to zero, well, it's gonna make the cat jump to the center of the screen. Let's try it, click, bang. Okay, so the cat jumps to zero, center of the screen. Where it gets interesting is when you plug a Pico board in and you go to the sensing section here, right down the bottom, it gives you a couple of extra menu items that you didn't have before. Uh, and one of them is sensor value and the other is uh, just looking at input from the sensors. So I'm gonna do two things. I'm gonna tick this box which in turn shows the sensor value up here. Now, let me just show you what that does. As I move this slider across, left and right like this, it's actually showing what the sensor value of the slider is. So at one end you've got zero, and at the other end you've got 100. And all of the sensors in Pico board go from zero to 100, okay? So what we can do then is to take this sensor value for the slider and drop it into the well there where the zero used to be. So now what we've done is we've said that the X value of the cat is equal to the value of the slider. So as I move this now, you can see the cat moves. So what I've just created is a direct human interface between a real live, real world um, slider and a software driven program happening on the computer. Now it gets interesting because zero, Oops, sorry, turn around this way. Zero is there, and the cat's in the middle of the screen. If I push this across to 100, the cat goes to 100. So immediately, there's some really interesting mathematics that 
you could throw it at one of your students to say, well, I don't want the cat to go from zero to 100. I want the cat to go from the far left of the screen to the far right of the screen. So how do we mathematically manipulate that number so that we're getting the full range of the screen instead of just a part of it? So there's one little thing. Now, at the moment, we're also, I'm just going to get rid of this uh, slider sensor value. So I'm just going to untick that so it goes away. Now that's looking at the slider, but what about if I click on here and go, what about the light? Okay. And you can see the cat's kind of hovering there a little bit because the, the sensor is looking at the ambient light level. So if I take this and move it closer to a light, and uh, perhaps what I need to do is actually just um, switch that to light and turn that on so you can see the value of this. So when I turn it up there, and it's getting, I'm, I've just put this under my desktop light. So it's 97, which is basically, you know, getting full light. Or if I take it away and cover it with my hand, so it drops down to the value four, so it's nearly dark, and I can make the cat move now in response to the light level. Okay, so so there's another way you can interact with a sensor. Uh, here's another way, so I maybe change this from light sensor to the sound sensor. So it's now listening uh, 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 to the sound level. So you can see as I talk into the microphone, the, uh, the cat is moving in response to the amount of sound pressure level. Um, or volume. Should just take that light sensor away because that's not really giving you a very good indication there. Turn on sound and okay so now I've got the sound sensor value. So when it's silent we're at zero and when we talk really loud you saw there it peaked up to 9900. So they're the way the sensors can operate on the board. Now let me just Okay, here's um, a couple of really simple examples example. of how you might use this. And, and these are trivial examples, but obviously they can build up into quite sophisticated programs. So this first one, let me just move this over so you can see it Okay, better. This one says that when I press the space key to start the program, and you can see it's running because it's got the white outlines around it. The Y, the slider value controls the Y value of the cat. So it's going up and down. So similar to the last example of with the X value. And it also says that if the sensor, uh, forever if the sensor button is pressed, go to the next costume. So if I hold down this button, the cat changes costumes every 0.2 of a second. Let go of it, it stops. Press it, it starts. So you can start to make real button presses interact with the game, uh, with, the, with the, the scratch program. And I said game accidentally there because, I mean, that's the obvious use for it is to, you know, this is the button you use to shoot or this is the, you know, the button that makes the character jump or whatever. So these physical sorts of controls. Uh, let me open another example for you. Uh, let's try, let's not save that. Let's try do, 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 this one. So this one, um, you can see up in the corner here, I've got, again, let me just move this over so you can see it. I've got the sound sensor value up here. So when I talk, you can see the volume goes up like that. And there's a little program here that basically, now if you saw the um, the, the K-12 online presentation, you might remember there was the uh, Jackson Pollock example where we were writing a scratch program to make it paint like Jackson Pollock. This is a similar kind of thing. If I press the space bar to start it, it's a little worm that wanders around the screen. The difference is that this one is listening to the volume. And you can see down here, this says if the sound sensor value gets greater than 30, then we're going to change the pen size and change the pen color. So, hello! And you can see that when it detected the noise, it changed color. If I clap, it changes color. So the program's interacting with the physical world there by actually listening to sound waves and picking them up on the microphone and having the program respond to those changes. Okay, let's just stop that one. Let me show you another one. Uh, this, where are we? Open. No, don't save. Um, this is great. And again, I'm going to give a big hat tip to Martin Levins, who, who sort of gave me this idea as he was doing it with his kids. Um, but here's a, here's a great example. I'm going to take this, um, uh, the, the wire sensor resistance things I showed you earlier. I'm going to plug it into port number A. So you can see that. There you go. So it's plugged into number A, this A, B, C, D. And on the end of it, I've actually put a couple of um, paper clips, just paper clips. And I'm going to use these as probes. And the reason is, I have two pieces of fruit here. I have a strawberry, 
Okay, and I also have a half of a. Uh, well, it's, it looks like an apple. It's actually a nashi pear. So half of a pear that I just grabbed out of the fridge. And here's the thing. I'm going to just move this computer around so hopefully you can see what's going on here. So I'm hoping you can see those those fruits on the table there while you're looking at the game. Now, the game, I keep calling it a game. Um, if I press the space bar to start, you can see that's running. So the cat's doing nothing. The program says that if... I jab these in here, it says pear. If I pull them out, and now I jab them into the strawberry, it says strawberry. Okay? I just think that's kind of neat. Pear. Oops. Come on. Whoa. Sorry, try that again. Pear. Okay. So it's realized that's pear, and if I jab them back in here, it's realized that that's a strawberry. Now, let's pull this back up. How does it do that? Well, Take a look at the program. It's simply saying we've got two loops here that says uh, if the resistance on the sensor value is less than 68, then we're going to say strawberry. If it's less than 90, we're going to say pear. Now, the reason it works is because when nothing's plugged in, you have a resistance of zero. Uh, sorry, a resistance of 100. In other words, there's no electricity flowing. It has 100% resistance. If I plug it into the pear, you can see there that the resistance of the pear is 67 point something. It's around 67. Uh, why is the cat saying all this stuff? Probably because it's right on the edge. I do find that the fruit actually changes over time. There you go. So the resistance value there is 72. And this was basically saying if the resistance was less than 90, say it's a pear, and less than 68, so if I plug it into the strawberry, you see the strawberry's registering at, registering at 50, so 50 is less than 68. I could probably change those values. It's a really interesting exercise, I think, to get kids to sort of build these little, you know, identify the fruit. And you can take it much further than that. You could have, you know, you plug it into an apple and a picture of an apple comes up on the screen and it says the word apple with a voice, um, you know, piece of audio that comes over. Or uh, I think Martin was telling me he got his kids to take a piece of banana skin and they were using the probes to touch along the banana skin and it was getting different resistances all the way along. So they invented a, a, uh, a program that would play musical notes depending on the resistance it was measuring, effectively building a banana phone. Um, and they were playing the banana phone. So I think there's some really neat stuff you can do with these Pico boards. The last example I'll show you is um, if I just go here to this one. Uh, it's called Breakout. You remember the old classic Breakout game? And so there's a little piece of script that's been written here. It's quite a big piece of script, I suppose. Um, and it, it plays Breakout because of this. Oops, if I start the game by pressing space you can see that the slider is controlling the blue bag down there. And so I just try and play as I talk here. Oops, I got it the right way around. Oh, the wrong way around. <laughs> um, so essentially what's happening is the, there's a little script being written on the ball to make it bounce when it hits an object. And uh, the slider is being controlled by the, um, the, well, the paddle's being controlled by the slider rather. You might notice it's getting faster because it's written into the program to gradually get a little bit faster once it's done a few. Now, when it touches the red instead of the bat, so when it touches the blue, it recognises that it's a point gained. When it touches the red, it realises it's a live lost. And you can see there's the game over. These things for the playing that sort of game. Could you write that sort of game and play it on the like the left and right key on the keyboard? Absolutely, but it's it's really dodgy. This is much better and a much better experience of playing the game. So anyway, I just wanted to share a couple of ideas with you for what you might try and do with these Pico boards. I do think they're pretty wonderful, um, and they really add an extra dimension to what you can do with Scratch. So um, Google it. <laughs> might get yourself some if you feel like having a play, uh, and leave a comment and let me know what you end up doing with them. See ya.